The contents of the following program are not intended to substitute for the advice of your health care provider, and the producers of this series assume no liability for the use or misuse of the material presented. Creation or evolution? Design or random chance? They say it all began with a Big Bang. But when we look at the amazing human body, the answer is obvious. The complexity of the design exceeds anything man has ever made. The body could only have been designed by the master designer we read about in the Bible. Join us as we explore the miraculous development of the human baby. Divine Design. What a blessing it is to see and to hold a precious little baby. Just to think that God has blessed us and entrusted us with a new life. A mission, if you will, to raise that child to recognize God's purpose for him or her in this world. To give that child every advantage in health, education, moral training, and spiritual growth should be the aim of every parent. But how much thought do we give to how that baby forms in the womb? More importantly, how much consideration do we give to the development of the baby, the nutritional needs, the environment, and all the prenatal influences that will affect the baby even before it is born? Have you pondered the idea that character development actually begins in the womb? We're excited about a new series dealing with these very questions. We'll examine how we are truly a product of divine design. The miraculous creation of a new human life will be explored from conception to birth. We'll see such things as the amazing journey of the egg, the incredible functions of the placenta, how the baby grows in the uterus, and how mothers and even fathers can affect the health and well-being of the baby before birth. We'll discuss labor and delivery, how to minimize C-sections, and comfort measures that can greatly help the mother through the prenatal period, during labor and delivery, and afterward. We'll also share tips for caring for your precious little newborn. We know you'll be blessed, whether you are an expectant couple, a medical missionary, or just curious about childbirth. Even grandparents might enjoy this. So please join us as we begin this first episode of Divine Design. Hello, I'm Patty Barnes, an instructor and director of the midwifery program at Heartland College. I would like to share with you just a few of the many astounding wonders of childbirth. In Jeremiah chapter one, verses four and five, we read these amazing words. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. He knows each and every one of us, and he knew us before we were born. In Psalm 139, 13, we read, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. So you see, God is not just a bystander. He is actively involved in the formation of every individual. The next verse says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. The word fearfully comes from a Hebrew word meaning reverently, and wonderfully is derived from a Hebrew word meaning differently or distinctly. So each of us was reverently and distinctly made. Each of us are unique individuals. You and I have been specifically designed by God. We can see this in the fact that no two fingerprints are alike. No two brains are designed like either. The initial creases and grooves in the brain formed a unique brain print, if you will. 
Through the modern science and technology, we have been able to explore into the development of the baby in the womb to at least grasp some of the wonders that God performs to bring a new life into the world. Today, we want to just take a peek into this amazing process of the creation of life in the womb. Now let's look at some of the astounding facts of an incredible journey of a single egg cell from the ovary to the uterus. Just this little glimpse will be enough to cause you to say with the psalmist, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Did you know that when a baby girl is born, she is born with all the eggs that she will ever need? Approximately 400,000 egg cells are in her two ovaries. At the time of ovulation, one egg cell is released from one of the ovaries. The next ovulation will release an egg cell from the other ovary, and they alternate back and forth. Amazingly, if one ovary should become damaged and unable to release an egg, the other will sense the failure and release an egg instead. So there will always be an egg cell released. The ovidex, also called the fallopian tubes, have finger-like appendages at the end that captures the egg cell and draws it into the tube. Without this capture, the egg cell could wander off and perhaps eventually implant in the wrong place. This would mean no baby and possibly serious consequences to the mother. Once inside the fallopian tube, the egg cell become surrounded by thousands of little cells that act as escorts and nursemaids for the egg. They will supply the egg with all it needs. In addition to supplying the egg, they will also have a sticky surface that allows the egg to be propelled by the cilia, which are trillions of little hair-like structures that move the egg in a rhythmic waving motion through the tube toward the uterus. If the cell is fertilized, it will be within the first 24 hours of the journey. It is then called a zygote. The gender of the baby is determined at this point of conception. There are many miracles that take place in that process, but we won't have time to touch on them now. About 30 hours, the first cell division takes place. The egg is about the size of a dot on an eye, or a period at the end of a sentence. It remains basically the same size when it divides, but now there are two cells rather than one. These two cells divide to make four. This process of cell division is called mitosis. In about four and a half days, it will become a blastocyst, having a hollow section on one side and a cluster of cells on the other that we call the embryo that will form the baby. The surface around the hollow section has the ability to implant itself into the uterus, which in itself is a miracle. This implantation in the uterus takes place around the sixth day. Then the baby is sort of put on hold, resting from the journey of six days. While the production of the baby is in this resting state, the placenta is formed that amazing organ that will be the baby's life support until he or she is born. It is not difficult to see the parallels between reproduction and the creation week. There were divisions. The Lord divided the waters above from the waters beneath. He also divided dry land from the waters. He built a support system necessary to sustain life first then created the animals and man. The Lord created for six days and then rest the seventh. What a privilege it is for us women to be able to carry in our womb an illustration of God's creation. Now we want to take just a quick glimpse at the support system that God has put in the womb for the developing baby. Remember that on the sixth day, the blastocyst implants itself into the uterine wall? another amazing thing begins to happen. At this point, the outer cell begins constructing a primitive placenta. The placenta is the most remarkable organ of the human body, performing many tasks. Now let's look at some of these things. 
Did you know that the placenta brings oxygen to the baby and carries away carbon dioxide and waste? It is also stores carbohydrates, protein, calcium, and all the nutrition. And then it releases them as the baby needs them. This is why it is so very important to eat healthy so that the proper nutrition is available to the baby. Also, the placenta provides the hormones that helps maintain the pregnancy. The placenta has to serve as a baby's lungs, digestive system, liver, kidneys, and immune system. What an amazing organ. It offers protection for the baby from many harmful bacteria and substances. But there are some things that can cross the placenta and adversely affect the baby. These include alcohol, nicotine, drugs, and some viruses. This is why it is vitally important for mothers to abstain from these health-destroying substances, especially when pregnant. We will speak more on this subject a little later. The essential nutrients, hormones, gases, and antibodies from the mother are exchanged in the placenta. The mother's blood is pumped to and from the placenta, while the baby's blood is pumped through the cord to and from the placenta. Amazingly, their blood never mixes. The cord is a lifeline from the mother to the baby. This should remind us that spiritually, Christ is our lifeline, linking humanity to divinity, our hearts to His heart, and providing everything we need to live the Christian life. At birth, the Lord provides miraculously for the baby's own organs, now fully formed to take over. The lungs, the kidneys, the liver, and all the other organs take up the work that the placenta has been doing for the past eight months or more. As you can see, none of this could possibly happen by chance. We are truly fearfully and wonderfully made. After the baby is born, another miracle must take place to save the mother's life. Contractions eventually cause the expulsion of the placenta. When this happens, as many as 20 severed arteries are left behind with a potential pouring out about a pint of blood every minute. Since the average woman only has five to six quarts of blood in her body, you can see the emergency situation created here. Within 10 minutes, all of her blood could be drained. There's no need to panic, however. In God's infinite wisdom, He provided each of the severed arteries with a precisely placed muscular sphincter that closes off the vessel like a hemostat, pinching it closed to prevent loss of blood. This amazing process takes place so quickly that on the average, only about one pint of blood is lost. How thankful we should be for this disposable organ, the placenta. It has performed its task well and is ready to fade away. This is not just some old tissue we called the afterbirth, but the support system that provided for the baby all these months in the womb until the umbilical cord was cut. In the devotional book, Our High Calling, page 45, we read, Measure the cord, if you can, that has been let down from heaven to lift man up. The only estimate we can give you of the length of that chain is to point you to Calvary. Join me next time for more about our divine design.